Hey everyone, welcome to part one of my competition tutorials. We're gonna cover some super important things you need to know if you're attending a cubing competition in Australia, like what to bring, how your solves are gonna work, and generally just what the overall flow of the day is gonna be like. Let's get into it. Cubing comps in Australia are the best. They're completely run by volunteers and everything is provided for you. All you need to bring are the cubes you want to use. However, there are some rules around that. Your cubes cannot be electronic, they can't have more than one logo on them. They can't be disfigured or overly scratched and need to have solid color stickers or just be unstickered. So something like this carbon fiber cube would not be allowed. Okay, super important. First thing you wanna do when you reach the competition venue is head right here to the registration table. Here you'll receive the most important thing of all, the holy lanyard. Thank you. In this, you'll find your name tag and on the back, your individual schedule for the competition. Don't lose this, it's super important. For example, today I've signed up for 3x3, which I know goes from 9.15 to 11 o'clock, but when exactly am I on? Well, it turns out there are 100 people in this competition today, which they've divided into four groups of 25. And if I look at my name tag, I can see that I'm in group two and specifically on station 18, the organization. So until then, I get to hang out with my family and friends in the spectators area. It's the best place to do warm up solves, meet new people, and just enjoy being amongst lots of cubers. But make sure you keep your ears open because eventually you'll hear the announcer say, uh, calling for three right, three round one, group two. And that means you now have permission to enter the competitors area. So grab your cube because it's solving time. Step one, go to the puzzle drop-off table and deposit your cube at the corresponding station number. You should also see your name on the scorecard in the box so you can make sure it's right. Now make sure you do not go past the scramble table or your solves may get disqualified. Step two, find your station number and sit down where you'll get to do five solves. Step three, once you're done, take your cube with you and head out of the competitor's area. It's that easy. Congrats, you're now an official speed cuber. Okay, there's actually a lot more that I need to say about how you do those five solves at the table, but I'm saving that for part two of the tutorial, so make sure you watch that. There are five more important things you need to know to make sure everyone has a great time at the competition. First, events like these only work because everyone's helping out in some way. You can volunteer to be a runner to bring cubes out to people, or more importantly, as a judge at a station. In fact, your name tag might already have assigned you to specific groups. If I check mine, it actually tells me that I'm supposed to be a judge in group three, so better get ready. Part three of this tutorial series is all about how to be a judge, so make sure you watch that too. Note that judging isn't just for competitors. Parents and friends can also be judges as long as they know what to do. Every bit helps. Secondly, please look after your belongings. There can easily be hundreds, if not thousands of cubes at an event like this, so keep your puzzles together and in a safe location. Third, you're welcome to leave the venue between events, maybe to grab a bite to eat, but make sure you're back at least 30 minutes before your next event because schedules can slightly change. Likewise, after your last solve of the day, you're welcome to leave, but you're also welcome to stay if you wanna watch the rest of the solves. Just make sure you're not loud and disruptive because that will distract the competitors. Fourth, throughout the day, results will get uploaded online to WCA Live, which you can access from the competition website or this QR code on the back of your name tag. It's a great way to find out how you and others are doing and also know if you made it to any of the preceding rounds for an event. But if you don't understand how second or third rounds work, or if in fact you have any other question about the competition, then fifth, speak to a WCA delegate. You can't miss them. They're the wonderful volunteers wearing these red polo shirts and their jobs are to make sure competitions run according to the mission, spirit and regulations of the WCA. They will be very busy for most of the day, but will also be really happy to help you wherever they can. And that's how a cube competition works. Watch this again if you need to, but don't forget to get into part two, how to do your solves and part three, how to judge. We hope you enjoy your competition hosted by Speed Cubing Australia.